Happy New Year. Welcome everybody. We are back this year in the year 2021 with our first Inspired By this, this Happy New Year. We're very excited to be here. We have a special edition here on Saturday. We thought that we would uh, liven up your you know, beginning of your new year with uh, some K Facet. So we're really excited today. We have K Facet with us today. We have Brandon Mabley and we have Liza Lucy. And we're really excited to be talking about a program that we have here at Free Spirit Fabrics uh, coming up in June. It starts to ship in June of 2021 and the program starts in July of 2021. But we wanted to uh, reintroduce you to it. If you haven't already heard about it, we're sure that you have, but we have CAFE here to talk all about it, which we're very excited about. We are here with Inspired By, we are Free Spirit Fabrics, and I am Sharon Thornton. Uh, we welcome you. Uh, I'd like to say Happy New Year. Very excited. It's a new year. And, uh, you know, we, we're glad that everyone's back uh, to see us. Um, we would like to ask you to send us thumbs up. We'd like to ask you to send us some hearts. Uh, when Kate is showing something you really like, throw a heart on there or a thumbs up. Tell us where you're from. We always love to know where everybody's tuning in from. We know that people tune in from all over uh, the United States, Canada, and all over the world. And we love to see where you're tuning in from. It's always fun for us to see, you know, what hours people are up and what they're doing and whether or not they're, you know, viewing. So we ask you to do that as well. Um, Lindsay Dryden and, and Nancy Jewell are also on on behalf of Free Spirit Fabrics. If you have any questions about anything we're doing today, you can find us at freespiritfabrics.com. And Lindsay and Nancy will be answering any questions you may have in this Facebook Live. We will be looking for questions. So if Kay or Liza don't answer any questions that you have uh, put out there, we will certainly ask those questions more towards the end of CAFE talking as well as Liza uh, as we go through today's program. Again, we thank you for joining. We're excited to be here. Um, I'd like to just talk, my top here is a Zappy Dots, Zappy Dots top. It's the glamping uh, design. And I'd also like to talk about the fabrics behind. Uh, these are 108 inch quilt backs. These are all the K Facet Collective quilt backs that, and all of these will be shipping in February of 2021. So we've got these beautiful onion ring skews here by Brandon. We have the, um, oh gosh, I'm forgetting the name of this one here in the Lotus middle. Leaf. What Lotus are they? Leaf. Lotus leaf. Lotus leaf, thank you, Kay. It just escaped my mind. So we have Lotus Leaf here for uh, Philip Jacobs, and we have the Millefjord down here on the end by Kay Facet. And they're great sateen, 108 inch quilt backs. They're beautiful. Please, you know, look for those. They'll be shipping to uh, quilt stores in February. The other thing that I'm sure that Kay will remind us all of um, in his presentation is this uh, flannel grid. I want to remind everybody that this is a great, great grid to use in your quilt development, whether you're putting a block up for an audition or you're laying out your quilt for an audition before you start sewing it together. It's really great. Uh, the fabric adheres beautifully to it, and it's a great preliminary view of what you're going to be sewing together. So we'd like to just remind everybody of all of these. So today, like I said uh, previously, we are talking about the Gathering No Moss program that begins this July. And CAFE is going to be talking to us about this. There are four options in this quilt. We have it in gemstone, we have it in smoke, we have it in delf, and we have it in scarlet. And CAFE is gonna be talking to us about all of this. He's gonna be talking to us about his inspiration, what began the uh, journey of uh, developing all of these quilts. And uh, we're excited to hear all about this. So without further ado, I am going to turn my spotlight video from myself over to CAFE. So hold on one second here. So CAFE, we are, you are on a spotlight video now and we are thrilled to have you here. Happy New Year. Thank you very much. And Happy New Year to everybody. Uh, it, isn't it interesting that this terrible thing that's happening in the world is happening everywhere? We all have to be sympathetic with each other. So um, I just would like to say that uh, 
a lot of people like very complicated storytelling sort of quilts, and I'm just not into that. Um, my thing is I've always loved traditional quilts. And what really got me fascinated with the world of patchwork was seeing uh, friends of mine go to an auction and buy a beautiful old quilt and bring it back. And we would pour over it and look at all the wonderful little patterns and fabrics that were in that. And I've never gotten over that addiction to very traditional uh, classic quilts, particularly ones that are easy to make because I design quite rich uh, kind of storytelling fabrics, really. And you know, they're like tapestries, a lot of them are very, very ornate and kind of Baroque designs of flowers and paisleys and great stripes and so forth. And so I'm not really um, that keen on very complicated small piece quilts. I like things with kind of medium to larger pieces so that I can show off my fabrics. You know, yes. if I design those and put that color in, then I really want them to show when they're used in a quilt. And also I like a quilt that's, that's kind of easy and quick to assemble so that you can put up all the elements of it and then rearrange it and change it according to what, um, you know, what makes those, those uh, colors and that fabric even sexier and have a bigger, stronger vibration of color. Because that's what I'm, I think my task in life is to help people bring a palette of color together and make it glow. That's what we're after, the glow. Even if it's a very faint glow of the glow from an opal, you know, something that's all shades of gray and very delicate pastel watercolory effects. That is a wonderful coloring and a wonderful world to exist in. And I often uh, find myself playing around with very gray down soft colors, as well as wonderful up vibrant reds and dancing on the tabletop colors, you know, that just have a terrific um, celebration uh, about them. Now, today we're going to talk about a quilt. I, I went around to many places in the world when I, we were able to travel. That was an amazing time to think back on. Uh, and I used to just uh, go and read the antique quilt uh, stalls in these festivals that I would go to in different places in the world. And I was always on the lookout for something that caught my eye that was a wonderful use of color and pattern, but that also was easy to construct. And I found this wonderful quilt in Houston one day, the wonderful Houston quilt market. And it was called um, Gathering no moss, is that what it's called? I can't even remember the, the name. The new one is but, Gathering No Moss. Gathering No Moss, right. Uh, and what, what I love about it uh, is that it, it's very, very basic and simple. And at the end of my spiel, uh, Liza is going to show you how to make the block, which is just charming. It's all done with kind of squares and oblongs and, and it's just simple and wonderful. Uh, and, and that, I caught on to right away when I looked at it. But what really caught my eye were these wonderful prints in wonderful shades of brown, but with stabs of rich indigo blue and then beautiful kind of uh, minty greens and deep rich kind of watermelon greens and just wonderful things. One of the things that was interesting about this quilt is that it had a few very light contrasting squares. Now that didn't interest me that much, although it, it, it was kind of exciting. But to me, when I really examined it, I thought that we were a bit distracting. There were sort of like headlights suddenly in the middle of the quilt. And so I've made my versions uh, much more even and sort of simpler in, in, in the sense of not quite so shockingly contrasting. 
So um, I hope you enjoy those and I'm going to show you. Um, the, the, what, one of the things that I noticed about it was that there were a lot of beiges and grays and <clears throat> kind of small prints that became kind of tweedy. And so we had the feeling of, of a kind of earthiness of the palette. Uh, kind of gray coming into kind of peaty browns and those kind of colors. But it, it was all those kind of neutral uh, prints that made the color, when the color does exist, it really sings out because it has this base of kind of stony grays and neutrals. And that's one of the things about color that I find most fascinating. Um, if you really want to bring rather subtle colors to life and make them really vibrate. You put them with very neutral colors and then the little bit of color that's in them just shines out. And so that is just one of the things I've learned. Now, so, taking okay. these down, okay. I'm going to show you my first version. Mm -hmm. This is the way I played with the story. I tried to go for those <clears throat> browns and grays and soft colors, but I made it paler, as you can see. Uh, it's got a kind of softer quality, but with stabs of um, kind of darker, brighter things. Like for instance, in there is this wonderful fabric of Philip Jacobs, <clears throat> which is feathers. It's beautiful. And so we've got these wonderful kind of decorative feathers with wonderful strong markings and, mm -hmm. and deep colors. And so that brings one of the sort of dark things I can see right here. There's a very dark square um, of that. And um, another, one, another one of Phillips that I find fascinating is called geodes. And you can see this is one of my favorite colorways. I do the colors for Philip, and I thought that this colorway really worked a treat. A kind yeah, of that's really handsome. Uh, ochres and browns and grays and things, but I love the kind of, they're, they're sort of soft, warm colors, you know, a beautiful palette. Um, and uh, another thing, is Millefiori as one of the patterns that I come back to and back to. It's become our, one of our classics. And this is a new colorway that I did for the, that pattern. And so you can see the circles there of, 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 of uh, Millefiori. Um, and if I get really close, you can see the details uh, of all the little pieces of these kind of like paperweights. I made it to design. Uh, another colorway on that, which is similar, but quite different really, is it's a more antique kind of coloring of that. And all of these worked uh, as this kind of small print um, idea for the quilt. Another thing that I really love in here is Brandon Mabley's uh, animal print, which is really, really quite gorgeous in color. Love that. Yeah, orange and a kind of snakeskin feel, wonderful texture to it. Mm -hmm. um, uh, the one of the fabrics that we made into a classic right away was one called Brassica, which is beautiful decorative catches <coughs> that Philip Jacobs did. Now this is very subtle. I hope that you can see it out there in the world. Yeah, um, very, very gray. subtle shades of gray. This is kind of to me like a very delicate marble when it's when it's cut up and put together. It can be a beautiful background for when you want to highlight some kind of jewel-like colors. Uh, using a very soft, neutral, grayish background like this can be just charming for that. And uh, then, then, you know, I resisted doing polka dots for years, but one of the polka dots that I really love, when I got into it, I really love it. I keep adding colors to the range. But you can see this is the sashing 
that is all over this thing. So that gives it this little, very soft dove gray with little pinkish white uh, spots. And that gives a very, very nice feeling to surround all of the um, parts of this quilt. Uh, and on the back, you'll notice that I've used uh, Brandon Mabley's onion rings in black and white, which is a great backing for anything, but particularly for this neutral quilt. So I just wanted to remind everybody that the quilt that Kaif just showed us, that's the smoke version of this, uh, of the four different colorways that we're offering in this program. Right. Kaif, I before you tell us about this next quilt, I just wanted to let you know that we have a lot of people watching today. Right. And a lot of groups of people are watching too. So a lot of people have gotten together. How to wonderful. Isn't that great? And I also um, see that Philip Jacobs has joined. So we have a lot of people on today. Ooh. I just want to let you know that everybody's really excited to be here. Celebrities, well, well, that's wonderful. So, so we've got hen parties and uh, yes, and, and all and celebrities watching. How great uh, to have Philip watching. That's that's wonderful. Yeah, isn't that so, great? Now here we've got um, an interesting taking scarlet and. Um, and greens. It's almost kind of a Chinese combination. One of the things, you know, I was raised in a wonderful Chinatown in San Francisco, very near the Chinatown. And I used to notice how they would play with red and green and in the most amazing ways, uh, it, making it incredibly exciting. So with the greens, um, I've got Millie Fiore again. And this time, look at that color compared to what we just saw, you know, those sort of antique browns. Mm -hmm. We've got this kind of uh, emerald green and jade greens put together. So that's kind of exciting to see how that works uh, as, as one of the fabrics. And these are the backgrounds. So this is um, Roman glass, which is would you believe it, the very first fabric I ever designed, and it's still in our range, all these mm -hmm. millions of years later, I just can't believe it. And that was designed from looking at wonderful antique fragments of glass from ancient Rome and seeing all these beautiful little glass candies, as I call them, that were in the glass. And I made wow. a design from that. So that was your very first skew, Kay? Very first fabric that I ever designed for the, wow. for the ranges of fabrics. And it's wonderful that it's still going. And this is similar, but it's finer. So we get smaller pieces on this. This is from wonderful glass paperweight that um, Liza had a friend and she lent it to me. And I just did all the beautiful little, what I call those glass candies. And this uh, in a million different colorways is one of our best uh, classic uh, designs. Brandon uh, does wonderful, simple, um, strong kind of primitive things. And he did this wonderful jumble, which is um, you can see just lots of wonderful, very organic circles. And I, the scale of this, the boldness of it makes it wonderful. I use it all the time for sashing, for backgrounds, for borders for everything. It's just a very exciting fabric and it shows color wonderfully. So that those are the sort of green stories. Um, and then we've got Philip Jacobs, wonderful wisteria. Now, I asked Philip to come up with a good wisteria design. I have to get it the right way up. Yeah, and, and so he came up with this wonderful design. Um, and we've done it in many different colors. I've done it with a black background and very amazing blues and so forth. But here we've got sort of purples and uh, very high pinks on this wonderful, rich, uh, orangey red background, scarlet background. And um, 
another one of, of Brandon's that I love, a very sort of abstract, but a real shot of magenta. And that's very exciting with those greens. It has a terrific vibration. Uh, what else have we got here? Oh, this is another one of Philip Jacobs. This is, I showed you the gray brassica, which was like marble. And here we've got another one that's incredibly popular. There's pinks and magentas and purples and wonderful kind of smoky orangey pinks. And that uh, is makes a very good fabric for this quilt. One of the things that's exciting about this quilt is that it, you take a stack of greens and a stack of reds, you could play with the idea of just switching them around and having all your details, the small squares in green, and you could make them the background red on each of these blocks. You can also switch around the blocks. <clears throat> you have a stack of fabrics that are background fabrics and ones that are the details of the design. And you can make those combinations however you like. You'll notice that certain ones are more contrasty than others. Some of the combinations I put together are very close. And so they almost disappear because they're the same sort of value. Um, and if you don't like that, if you want a little more edge, a little more contrast, then put the, the fabrics together in a way that they have more of an edge. Like I'm seeing here, this one is wonderfully sharp, the lighter green and the quite dark red. So it has a real edge. One of the things that's interesting about this, I've done another quilt with exactly these combinations of fabrics, same fabrics, but with different sashing. Here I've got a dark sashing of circles, um, one of my designs, and um, it, it's quite dark. But look at this, and you'll see that here's a lighter version where I've done just a red sashing. And the only difference is that this has a red sashing, but do you see what a difference that is from, from this one, which just has this kind of darker feel to it because of the sashing? And here the sashing is red so that we get this glow. I mean, I can, I can see it on my screen. It's so exciting. I find it, um, this is the one I prefer. I really love this one. Uh, we've got Brandon's um, wonderful jumble. And there's, so there's that design, which I love and I have in so many different colorways. I'm making a quilt at the moment that's all different versions of this different colorways of this particular fabric. <clears throat> but that is the sashing. So that surrounds everything here. But then we get a little cornerstone of my um, paperweight design. So get a little, little circular thing with kind of wonderful mossy greens. Um, and there, there it goes. So that you can see from the three different versions I've shown you here, I've kept it fairly um, close toned. It, it's, it's not got a real hard edge. I can see that I'm, certain circles are standing out quite nicely from, from this distance. And I like that, but they're still kind of smoldery. They're not high contrast, but my mm -hmm. last quilt. Okay, <coughs> okay yeah. before you change that. I just want to let everyone know, the, could you just pull that back for a quick second? That quilt is called Scarlet. And the one before that that Kaif showed is called Gemstone. And as Kaif pointed out, the only difference between both of these that he's showing is the sashing and what a huge difference it makes in just changing. Can't you, Sharon? Excuse me? It really is. Oh, yeah, it's amazing. Yeah. You know? So uh, th th this really brings out the red. Right. And, uh, my last quilt was my gorgeous Liza 
loves Blue and White, as I do. We're both just great fans of Blue and White. I have tons we of We all blue. love Blue. <laughs> I, I should have, well, I can, I can show you one of my paintings, actually. This is kind of Blue and White and Red and White. So you're getting a kind of, of, of show of the, of the strong kind of contrast that is, exists and so here is the strongest quilt of all. You can see it's practically black and white. It's got this wonderful kind of quite dark velvety blues, greeny blues and so forth. Um, and very, very exciting use of fabrics. And it goes with my shirt, don't you think? It does. Kate, you're getting <laughs> a lot of compliments in your shirt today too. Oh, lovely. Yeah, <laughs> it's, it's a fabric that I bought years ago somewhere uh, a, a handmade African tie-dye and uh, oh, wow. I love it it's so soft and worn I've worn it for years and really really enjoy it so anyway um there's there's kind of a ride down uh, gathering no moss you know it's 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 a wonderful uh old block which is very simple to make as you're going to see when Liza does her little demonstration. But um, here, the sashing is a wonderful fabric called Shark's Tooth, uh, which Brandon, Shark's Teeth, which Brandon designed. It has a beautiful rolling rhythm so that the, um, the different parts of this quilt have a beautiful movement, you know? Mm -hmm. It just kind of rolls along. But I think that I can see uh, people that love blue and white, you know, and have wonderful big blue and white china pots, which I do. I've got some fabulous ones. Yes. Um, I should have brought one upstairs just to show you against this. But, you know, if you had a beautiful bedroom in a, in a grand house somewhere uh, and you wanted to just make that kind of blue and white statement, um, this would be the way to go with it. But it's interesting, isn't it? This is almost um, kind of just two colors, this quilt. Uh, whereas the other ones had these kind of flavors of, you know, uh, you know, greens that were more bluey green and, and reds that were more magenta and then more maroon <clears throat> and more scarlet, more orange. And so you've got these, these in and out flavors of playing with color. And that's what, I'm always trying to do uh, to people is to inspire you to play with color in that way. One of the, the way that I design quilts these days more and more is just taking a great range of colors. Like if I was do, doing this one, I would get all my blues and I just decide which blues really were gonna work together and be punchy and, and jewel-like and exciting. And then I would start getting kind of shades of white and off whites and pale pinks. And a lot of my blue and white quilts have soft greens and a little bit of yellow and a little bit of <coughs> uh, pink in them because I like that kind of um, warming up the whites. But it's just, I, I'm just hoping that you're all gonna enjoy it. Yes, sorry, Sharon. Yeah, no, I'm interrupting you, I apologize. Um, oh, do you have any of the fabrics that you wanted to show for this quilt as well? No, well I didn't bring any of those out. Yeah. Okay, that's okay. That's, 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 oh, Liza has them, that's right. Yeah, good, good. so Liza, Liza can show those. And right. um, I, I'm just, I, that, that's all I'm gonna say to you today because I'm, I'm just, I just hope that you're all feeling as creative as I am. I have been making, crazy things and designing and knitting and um, and doing needlepoint and making great big uh, patchwork blankets of my uh, knitting samples pieces uh, my swatches you know and so uh, it's been a, a very very creative time being locked into this prison <laughs> I know it. all in uh, but um, you know we're on the verge of being let free but boy these last days can be wonderfully creative and I hope that you all will be. So well, God bless Cave, you all. Cave, thank you so much. And I just wanna um, tell everyone now that the, the quilt behind Cave is called Delph. And right. we're gonna switch over to Liza in one second. Um, and she's gonna show us how to work in some blocks. 
But Kate, not to put you on the spot, I hope I don't put you on the spot. Um, we were talking about this before we came on. So the block was originally called um, Rolling Stone and it was renamed, this quilt is now be, being called Gathering No Moss. Right. So we were talking about how this became named Gathering No Moss. Would you like to talk well, about that? I, or? I, I just don't know. You know, I just saw it in, in an antique book uh, one day, or maybe it was on the label of the quilt that I bought. I, I can't remember. Oh. I just remember seeing that it was a quilt block uh, that was called that. And I just thought, how interesting, you know, the, these different names like flying geese and tumbling blocks and everything that these different quilt blocks are called uh, mm -hmm. just fascinates me. I, I, I am so fascinated by the world of vintage quilts and the vast creativity that went on in, uh, you know, from unnamed women for years and years and years who made these wonderful pieces for their homes and so forth. And we get to uh, enjoy them in museums and wonderful quilt books of vintage quilts. So, you know, I'm, I'm just happy. I, I, I don't know the origin of that. If somebody knows it, please send me an email. Oh, but, no, uh, I just meant more from, you know, a rolling stone gathers no moss is more yeah. what <laughs> was kind yeah. of a play on that, potentially. But if you but, know um, more, it would be lovely. Uh, Kafe, I just wanted to tell you, like I said to you before, we have a lot of viewers today and, and not only individual viewers, but a lot of groups have come in today. So I just yeah. thought you'd really like to know, because I know there's no way for you to know that. So I just wanted you to know that we have a lot of viewers that are very excited about this and very complimentary to you and to uh, Brandon and Philip. They're saying, you know, keep designing. We love your designs. We love your colors. You know, a lot of, you know, you're so inspiring and they're thanking you for being on today. So we oh, thank you too. We well, thank, thank you. you to all of you. And uh, I'm telling you every quilt show I ever go to, I'm so turned on by what you guys do and contribute to those quilt shows around the world. So I'm, I love everybody's creativity and all the things that come over Pinterest and uh, all of that too is fascinating. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm happy to hear you're out there looking <laughs> at all that. So that's fantastic. All right, Kate. Well, thank you so much. And okay. um, say hi to Brandon. Is he there? Can he pop in quick? Is he around or? No, no, he's not going to pop in quick. Oh, he's not going to pop in? Okay. No. So, uh, well, tell him we said hello. And we're going to okay. switch over to Liza now. And Happy New Year to you and Brandon. And thank you. Uh, thank you so much for giving us your background on, uh, you know, how you were thinking of the designing of all of these quilts. I mean, I think it really is people look at the quilts and they decide which one they want to make. You know, it's always nice to have, uh, you know, a little bit of background and insight as to what you were thinking as you developed them. Good. So we thank you so much for that. Okay, so I'm going to switch over to Liza and she's going to be on Spotlight Video. So welcome, Liza. Hey, Sharon. Here we are. Yes. Happy New, Happy New Year. Happy New Year to you too. So I'm sure you're going to describe how this program is going to work for the various shops. Um, I don't deal with those details, so I'll let you fill that in. But I yes. want to show you the three groups of fabrics in the Delft colorway. And as Kate was saying, you can move around and do things the way you wish. You don't have to follow our formulas exactly. But what we did was we have a group that will be centers of the block. And you can fussy cut those if you wanted to have just a flower, you could fussy cut it, you don't have to. Then the details are my darkest blues and the backgrounds are what I call whites. But again, you know, don't take that so literally, as you can tell, this is not really white. It's just a matter of contrast and how this looks very white, this looks almost black, and these will be your centers. So the way that Kate and I work together is he'll come cook up an idea. In this case, he sent me a picture of his antique. And I work with the electric quilt program and end up getting my math together. And that will calculate measurements for me, which I'm grateful for because I used to have to do this from scratch and now I have a 
computer program with electric quilt doing this for me. And then I'm ready to cut and sew. Um, this block is behind me here. You can see it's made up of rectangles, squares, and then blocks that are a square within a square. And there are two different ways to make this one. Some people make them using squares that you put on the corners and cut off, and I'll show you how to do that. Some people make them with half square triangles and sew them to the center. Uh, this is my preference, but this is easier. I just happen to be frugal about fabric. This usually uses less, and it's good to build your skills. So what you will do is you're going to make four of these units out of the two fabrics, and you're gonna make four of these pairs and one center. And you'll sew these first, then sew these together, and then sew this to this, to this, this to this, to this, this to this, and then sew your block together. And if that was too fast, um, there will be paperwork that comes with your pattern uh, and fabric. So I'm gonna go over to my machine and show you how to do the square and the square blocks. Um, I've got bright pink thread so that you'll be able to see my stitches. Uh, I normally would not do this. So one of the things that has made this sort of thing, this sort of block easy for me is years and years and years, I've been using this thing called the angler, which is no longer made. And it helps me keep my fabric going straight. Um, we've, we are developing one now with paper pieces and they're gonna produce one uh, for me to replace that product that's no longer made. So the easier way to make this block or the cheater way is to cut a square. I believe these are four and a half inches and these are two and a half. You draw a pencil line from corner to corner and you sew on the pencil line. The reason for this is if you don't want to draw with a pencil, you put this here and you place, see the point? Can you see the, the yeah. Uh-huh. And then you put your needle down at the beginning and then you keep your eye here. Don't look at the needle, look at the stripe. And that is a way of not having to take that step of drawing with a pencil. I like that. Well, that's one way. The other way, of course, is to just forget about this and you sew on the pencil line. And you do this on all four corners and you're more careful than I just was. And you're going to cut this out off about a quarter inch from your stitching line and fold it back. And you will do this one too, and then the other two, and you will have a square and a square. Very nice. The way I do it, and the measurements are somewhat different, so I'm going to show, show you the measurements. Your center squares are a smidge beyond three and a quarter by three and a quarter. And your half square triangles are two to seven eighths. You make a square and then cut it in half. And what I do is I find the middle of both pieces. I do it by pinching, by the way, making creases. And if you put your needle down right where that's going to meet, you'll be in just the right spot. That's how you know you've got the right size. And so that right along using a, this a quarter inch foot. Normally I have a stiletto here. I forgot mine. Hold. Liza. Yes, and then fold it back. Oh, there you and go. You do, and I do opposite sides, one, two, three, four. Wow. 
So if you go back over to this board, uh, my photographer here, this one Alex was done. done a great job, Liza. Uh, Thank you. This one was done with the squares. And this one was done with the triangles. And they're exactly the same. Right. So it's just a matter of preference. Matter of preference of how you like to sew. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They're, bo they're both correct. Right. Does exactly. anybody have any questions about sewing these or how to go about it? Uh, Are we good? Well, let me see. I don't see any questions. Just people that say that they have an angler. Um, yeah. No, they found their angler. Everyone's loving this. Uh, the angler was a game changer. So you're saying that the angler isn't uh, produced anymore, but you're working on one with paper. Uh, That's right. That's right. This, this, this has gotten me through many, many quilts, but it's no longer available. And uh, so I've asked paper pieces to develop one for us. It won't have so much going on, but it will have the, um, the, the stripe that you follow with your, your points. Wow. And we hope to have that very soon. Oh, okay. Well, that's going to be a question too. So again, a lot of hearts are coming through on that, Liza. A lot of people. Are <laughs> <Good. that. laughs> so a lot of people are also saying, um, "Oh, you know what? I don't have this information at, at handy." Uh, mm -hmm. But Sid Hill is asking, "How big are the individual blocks? Do you happen to know that, I Liza?" Think, I think it's thirteen inches. Yeah. Sorry, I, believe, I don't. I, I don't it's have a that. Block. So the cent okay, so the centers are cut five and a half. Rectangles are cut two and a half by four and a half. And these finish um, at this will finish at four inches, this will finish at four inches uh, this way, five inches that way. So five, four, and four. Five, four, and four. Yep. So this is a five inch, this will be a four inch. Right. So inch. Got it? Yep. Was that clear? It's clear to me, yep. Okay. <laughs> anyway, I'm just trying to scan through. Uh, a lot of comments about the angler. How large is the square in the center? You already said that. <laughs> uh, you wanna write it down? Yep. So yeah, no, I don't have any questions. People are loving the fabrics. They're loving how the close-ups of it all. Um, they love watching, you know, a lot of positive comments, uh, love watching it. What did you do show, Liza? Uh, the measurements, if you want to do it with, um, if you want to do it with the half square triangles and the centers. Yeah. Those are the measurements. So I say three and a quarter plus, because this is a smidge bigger. Okay. Okay. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. So, well, thank you, Liza, for giving us this quick demonstration. And the Delft uh, quilt is beautiful along with all of the others. They're all so gorgeous. It's going to be hard. You know, how many, how many do we make, right? How many of well, the... Well, I mean, you know, this is another example where you could switch them, where this becomes the, the circles and this becomes the background. You right. Know, you, you can do it the other way and uh, change the sashing. You saw what that can do. Use right. your own... Put some of your own stash in there. Make make this a scrappy quilt. It is a scrappy quilt. You know, Kate said from the very beginning when we started this company together, is that he wanted the fabrics to look as though, though you came upon them in a boot sale, which is a, a flea market in England. Boot being the trunk of your car. And so, um, you know, they do. There are no coordinates here. Uh, right. They they're varied. I, I'm sorry if you can hear that whimpering in the background. It's my dog. Sure. Oh, no, I don't hear it. Okay. Well, does your dog want to come in? Uh, I, I'm sure she does. <laughs> right. So, um, Liza, I'm going to take you off the of spotlight. So what's okay. going to happen now is when, uh, if you'll still be there, though, um, when I take you off, it's going to be both of us on. Okay. Hold on. And I just want to see if we can unmute you. Can we unmute Liza? Yeah, great. Thank you. So um, Liza, thank you for the demonstration. It's been great. Um, just want to remind everybody that, you know, as Liza just showed us how to lay out that particular uh, block. And as she just said, you know, you can do whatever you would like in terms of uh, placement in this quilt, you know, add your stash to it get different coordinates. Uh, there are beautiful fabrics that CAFE has coming out in February. 
you know, add those to this project is something that you decide you want to replace it with or anything like that. So, you know, add your own creativity to this, the whole way that you're working on it. I mean, CAFE has given us a wonderful foundation to begin with, with all of these uh, versions. And so I just wanted to go through it one more time because I know people are, are going to ask. Um, so there are four versions of this quilt. So there's gemstone and there's scarlet. And these are the virtual images. I hope everybody could see these, okay. Um, and the difference between them is the sashing. And so when Kate showed them to us, that's what the difference is. And then the very first quilt that Kate showed us was the smoke quilt, and that's this one. So it's a, you know, a little bit more subtle in terms of the color combinations, but beautiful quilt. I think I'm gonna make that one, I have to confess. And then this last one that Liza shown, the Delph or the Cave showed, and that Liza showed us the block. This is the Delph version of the quilt. So there's four different quilts. <clears throat> Excuse me. And um, like we said previously, uh, well, if, if you're interested in the program, we ask you to reach out to your local quilt shop very soon because they will be ordering their fabrics as of. Uh, January 22nd, that's the cutoff date for them to order into the fabrics for this program. So if you're interested, please contact your local quilt shop, tell them you're interested, tell them which color ways, plural, you're interested in making. And, uh, or, you know, whether it be one or whether it be multiple, because there's so many to choose from, it's hard. Uh, but anyways, tell them that you're interested and buy into uh, the, the program with your local quilt shop. Uh, again, beautiful quilt backs to choose from. We have, uh, we've selected many different pairings for each quilt. You can do a 44 inch. Cave has a huge selection of his classics and his stash of which you can choose from. So many different ones, uh, whether you select what we've selected or you wanna select your own. So many of these gorgeous quilt backs, like I said, that'll be shipping to shops in February. So you might wanna select those while you still can. And, uh, you know, so much to choose from. Program starts to ship to the shops in June. And then we will begin the program in July. It will run July 6th through August 10th. I wanna remind everybody, I don't, actually, I don't think we said this. There's going to be a swag bag with the program as well. So here's a little picture. I hope you can see that, okay. So the swag bag has been designed with each one of the quilts on it. So as, as you pick up your uh, quilt that you select from the quilt shop, hopefully it'll be in your swag bag. And with every swag bag comes the pattern and it'll be a printed pattern. It's not a PDF download. It's a very nice pattern that will be printed and it will show all four colorways. So you can make you know the one that you're making and you can also see the options for the others. You could go back to the quilt shop afterwards and you could buy into the fabrics, as Liza said, you could also pick up um, and add more colors to it, you know, change it, as Cave said, make them however you would like. You know, we want you to be creative. It's all about having fun and making uh, everything that you create your own. So we strongly encourage you to do that. Um, I think that's it. I think I've covered everything. Liza, can you think of anything else? No. Nope. Nope. No. Happy New Year. So happy new year to you, Liza. Thank you for coming on today. Thank you for Alex uh, filming there in the background. She did a great job as usual. Alex, are you there? I am, but you don't want to see what I look like right now. Oh, okay. We don't want to see you today. Okay. <laughs> Go ahead, show money. Gosh, no. All right. Well, thank you for being there. Kate, you're still there. Kate, do you want yep. to say anything before we sign off? Um, just, you know, happy, happy, happy to everybody. And I, and I, we've got through this far, we're going to make it to the end. Yes, we are. We're all looking forward to that. So yeah. thank you, Kate and Liza. Thank you to Alex. Thank you to Brandon. Thank you to Philip. We thank all of you. Thank you to everyone that tuned in today. We're so excited that there've been so many. Uh, we're glad that you were. Um, we're all hoping to break out of captivity soon and all get to see one another. But Zoom has been great this year. You know, it's been great to do these Facebook Lives. You know, Kafe and Brandon, we've had the opportunity to have you so many times. We've had people on today, Kafe, just so that you know, saying how pleased they are to have had the opportunity to see you, you know, talk. 
um, with us multiple times this year. So we thank you for that. And uh, so, you know, the world has changed and in some ways not so good, but in other ways, very good. So we just try to pull the good from it that we can. And uh, again, if you are interested in doing this Gathering No Moss uh, program, which begins in July of 2012, of 2012, 2021, I got my numbers. It gets a little <laughs> yeah, <graduated. today. laughs> Please uh, reach out to your local quilt shop. So again, thank you for tuning in today. Happy New Year. And let's bring on, you know, a lot of positivity for this upcoming year. So thank you, everybody. We'll talk to you all soon. Right. Bye. Bye. Bye.